my name is Kevin Park, and and before we start, you know, let me introduce the um, the um, let me introduce the company. Um, our motto is um, the live and work for the benefit of all mankind. Um, I believe uh, by doing our best to support you, it will help the society that we belong to. Our business area is, of course, um, product sales and service. As, the, as a dental, digital dentistry solution provider, we would like to deliver solutions for your treatment, not just individual product. But also we have a, a workshop I, do, I would like to call uh, digital workshop. It's not fancy, it's not big, but it has um, design software, all-in-one milling machine, and two cornea components, and 3D printer, and wash and cure machine for uh, post-processing. And currently, we are able to provide the aligner manufacturing service, and milling service, and 3D printing service. Uh, we are able to provide scan, face scan, internal scan, or motor scan, and software is for crown and bridge, and surgical guide, and um, clear aligner, and milling machines, solutions like machine, furnace, and milling materials, and 3D printer, and washing and cure machine, and also we do have digital x-ray um, solutions too. Um, we would like to provide the seminars for liner and crown bridge design and such guide design and other um, applications too. Um, before we start, I'd like to ask you a couple of things. And first, and um, you don't have to turn on uh, the, your camera, uh, but please stay mute. Uh, if, you have, if you have questions, please leave them to chat room and Dr. Ho will answer them. And lastly, please spend some time to visit our website after the seminar. It would be great help for us. And without any further delay, I would like to introduce Dr. Michael Ho to lead today's seminar. And Dr. Michael Ho has been practicing dentistry for over three decades. After receiving his Bachelor of Dental Science from University of Sydney, Dr. Ho began practicing in NSW South Wales in 1991. Although Dr. Ho is experienced all in all facts of dentistry, he has a special interest in new dental technology, short-term orthodontics and dental implants, laser and cosmetic dentistry. He believes strongly in continuing education and, or, and is also a clinical trainer for dental implant and CAD CAM technology in Australia. And now I will start, share, start sharing my screen. I will pass the control to Dr. Michael Hall. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> you hear me? Good, good? Yes, very good. All right, let me share my screen. Hi everybody, all right, hopefully you're seeing my screen now. This is Michael Ho, introducing to the new era of orthodontics and adaptive orthodontics, AO. There's a significant revolutionary event unfolding. In the next couple of years, it will make an impact on the practice of orthodontics. And I predict that it will do so in a way that will significantly affect general dentistry. I'm exci excited to tell you all about it. So join us at AO to prepare for this eventuality and put orthodontic treatment control back in the hands of your clinicians, of the general practitioner. Uh, but first, a quick intro to me, which is yeah, uh, in addition to the kind one that uh, Kevin has just given me. So this is a picture of me a few years ago, <laughs> younger one, I didn't want to update it. I also completed my degree in computer science prior to dentistry. My special interest there was in robotics. I'm in private practice and have been since 1990 and my background have been always been interested in technology and dentistry. My current special interest, as Kevin uh, mentioned before, is in implants and orthodontics. And I present still in this, both these areas. 
Previously, I've done work with CAD CAM and I uh, introduced E4D, the competitor to CEREC, uh, to Australia. Needless to say, my uh, practice is prevalent with uh, digital technology. In a time that they've been in practice, and as Kevin mentioned, for three decades, it makes me sound so old, <laughs> there has been already a couple of disruptive events in the field of orthodontics. Two significant changes. Nickel titanium in the mid 80s and se se sequential aligners in the mid 90s. They were significant when you look back in time. And when I look at uh, when I was in uh, my final years of dentistry in the late 80s, my professor of orthodontics, Professor Godfrey, had already alluded to the fact that, you know, um, he was worried for his specialty because he said there's a technology which is nickel titanium that was going to change everything. And he was right, right? Nitai opened it up all for GPs. Before that, it was very, very difficult to work with uh, stainless steel. Nitai, nickel titanium, was the holy grail of fixed orthodontics. And those of you who do practice fixed ortho will appreciate this. Prior to nickel titanium, it was about bending stainless steel arch wires. It was, for the most part, not practical for the general practice dentist. Even in the hands of the orthodontist, there were too frequently root shortening due to excessive forces produced by the stainless steel arch wires. It was just too technique sensitive. When technology is so technique sensitive, it's not for me. I, I, I don't like it. So what's happened? Digital technology slowly but surely crept into dentistry, starting in the 90s, in all areas. But of special interest to in this presentation in particular is the sequential aligners in orthodontics. The momentum towards the use of clear aligners as the main modality in orthodontics is gathering right now. If you have noticed, more and more orthodontic specialists around is offering clear aligners. And they're also doing it as the main option there are some orthodontists that now don't do any more than um, uh, as a primary thing, sequential aligners. To further back this trend, two major orthodontic teaching establishments, POS and EODO, that's Don McGann and Derek Mahoney, respectively, have over the last 12 months introduced aligners into their mainstream courses. Now, both POS and EODO uses a third party provider for their aligners. Currently, as far as I know, these are clear, correct, and Invisalign, respectively. I say as far as I know, as these providers can change, and they have changed in the past for POS as they established their aligner courses and their alliances. Adaptive orthodontics will impart to you the ability to control the whole process to take away the need for a third party provider. But for this, we need the equivalent of night tie from the 80s we need to implement the power of digital technology. The confluence of several factors, all these factors, uh, in-house uh, uh, makes possible the fabrication of in-house aligners. It makes it realistic, makes it practical. And in doing so, in, in introducing in-house fabrication, I promise you that you'll get control back as we used to when we did fixed appliances and brackets and, uh, uh, with brackets and wires. Digital technology makes it possible um, to, uh, to deliver treatment in a very, very much more efficient way and at, at a lower cost. And it will do so both very, very effectively. There's more precision and it's more affordable. Patient acceptance is very high. Yes, it does increase, increase profitability, I, I can attest to that. But it's also very gratifying professionally. You will be able to do orthodontics, if you like it, and I love orthodontics, very much better. Uh, of all the components, of all the five components uh, here mentioned, they're all important. But the software component is the one I will preview for you soon. That is the main body. That's the reason why you'll get control back. But before I do so, I also mentioned point number five there, is that there is an early phase of a development that will significantly disrupt 
even the delivery of sequential aligners. And I believe this, uh, uh, that this will be the disruptive event. This will be the thing that will change very thing very significantly. The evolution, the re revolution is really upon us. Adaptive orthodontics will prepare you to take advantage of it. Okay, but more on that later. I just want to mention it now just as a teaser for you. Now for the preview. You'll find that taking up in-house fabrication align is satisfying both professionally and financially. At this time of COVID restriction, the sequential aligners portion of my practice has been unaffected. And in fact, with plenty of time to devote to implementation, development protocols and procedures, it's been a catalyst for its growth and my developing this course. These I will share with you to accelerate, accelerate your induction. There are some basic tools you'll need. And if you're not doing so already, you really should be scanning interorally. Um, speak to um, Kevin, and he has, he's got a terrific scanner. Uh, and really, there's a lot more application than just sequential aligners. Uh, if you're not doing so, you're kind of like put, still putting amalgam in, in people's head. Okay, number two, of course, you will need the software tool to digitally plan the orthodontic treatment and generate the aligner design. This is the main body. This is the, the core of what we need to get control back. And finally, of course, if you want to make it in-house, you need to know how to uh, 3D print. Currently, aligners are made on printed resin models. Okay, so you have to print one of these things. And each one of these things here, I hope you can see my mouse moving, um, it, it is generated with slight movements for the sequential movement. And then we use thermal plastic to form the trays. This is the current way that all labs are doing it, including people like Invisalign, if you didn't realize. The game changer, the disruptor that I alluded to before, will be the ability to print directly these clear liners. It's there, it's exciting, but it's just the beginning. I can't see it take, taking more than a couple of years for the competitors to come through. Okay, now in preparation though, to print this, you need to be able to print for stop. So I'll say to you right now, even as we are doing it right now, I'm much more profitable doing what I'm doing, printing this and make, making the clear liners from the models now. Okay, so but but the ability to print anything out of resin will give you the ability to make this directly when it becomes uh, uh, comes to general practice. It will be a significant difference. In any case, whichever way you do it now, you still have to be able to use this software or a similar software. But this software is the one I, I, I have allegiance to something as powerful as this to create the orthodontic movements. So let's get right into it. So primarily I'm going to show you now, instead of reinventing the wheel, I'm going to go straight to the website where they have a really nice uh, video on how this thing works. And I'll talk my way through it. And after that, I will actually call up the program and work through a few cases with you. Did I flip to the right place? Okay, good. So this is all the line. It, they also have this program, which I'm going to explore uh, later on, but auto line ha has a lot of automatic tools. Push tool, these automatic tools are very fancy. They look good and they kind of for most part work, but I don't like them. I don't think they're practical. They are just good marketing tools. Very quickly, you can set up a case and show off to patients and say, hey, here it is, and this is how much it's going to cost, etc., etc." So you can set up, it, it's real, it, this actually does work in terms of what you see, but in practicality, I, as a dentist, would prefer to make those movement within biological limits, so I do it manually. It has a patient management system, as you would expect that you should have. You can create a base, 
those of you who scan digital models will know that you know the the, the models are hollow and it hasn't got a back. So this base uh, production is actually very uh, important. Uh, it generates a report, primarily Bolton ratio analysis, which is really really important because I will I use that um, and also the um, the tables of movement uh, to guide us in placing attachments. Again, I'm jumping ahead for those of you who appreciate what attachments are all about. Um, and it's a core part of the course where we say, you know, where do we put attachment? How do we do it? The reports are important. Two segmentation is basic because everybody needs to be able to, to, to uh, have the model segmented into two individual teeth so we can actually then uh, move them around. These tools, they call it essential tools, but uh, I mean, the model making is very good. These tools here, eh, they're still working on it. But I introduce you guys to a third party, it's Mesh Mixer. Some of you may be familiar with it, which is free anyway, and it's much more powerful and much quicker to use. Um, measuring tools are very good. Again, when I in integrate the use of an a augmented tool like uh, Carrier Motion 2 appliance, you can actually measure here instead of measuring in the mouth or in the model, much more accurate uh, the uh, appliances. This is just part of the access, uh, the tools to, to align your teeth. Okay, what else? Tooth movements, basic but powerful, right? And in the course, you want to be able to, the first time I saw this, I thought, wow, it's so complex, you know, movement. But once you get a flow and once you get taught how to move them around, it's kind of like second nature. Moving these are very, very practical, very, very useful. So as a clinician, the ability to control the movements and also understanding what's the limitation. I mean, it's a computer software. You can make the two do triple somersaults if you want to, but it just won't be realized in, real, you know, in, in, in practicality. So I use these tools as a dentist to gain control back, and that's why I get better results. Instead of sending it to a third party, and supposedly getting a uh, you know some, somebody who's qualified to do it, I don't think so. I don't think thousands and thousands of cases got uh, orthodontists sitting around the table doing this for them. So you get your Mexicans, uh, you know, uh, staff doing this, and then you have to sit through it anyway. So I put it to you that the time that you invest in this, uh, uh, in this stage, is very very useful in terms of your uh, time spent and your treatment outcome. You can have the uh, simulation tool where you can actually extract the tooth. So all these options are available. You might say, well, why don't I try, well, I wouldn't extract canine, this is an interesting case. But you could say, I want to uh, extract a lower central and set up a case and, and see what it looks like. Um, you could also have the tools where you set certain teeth and say, say this is an implant, and you say fix it, you can't move that one. Um, you can do simulated interproximal reduction. All those very much basic tools are there. This, this, this program is fully featured. Now, all power, all useful programs of this nature must have this ability. The multi-layer is staging, in which, like a traffic controller, you can say, uh, you know, uh, if you don't tell it to, all the teeth will try to start to move at once, but you can actually say, I want to move these teeth first, before those ones, and you stage, first stage, move this, second stage, move this. Those, that's a powerful and obviously essential tools in my book, especially when you're doing, say, extraction mechanics. We can get into that. Multiple setup I alluded to before, you can trial many different forms. You can do extraction, non-extraction, you can move, uh, you know, um, uh, I don't know, uh, you can do, uh, uh, actually, mostly it's about extraction, non-extraction. But uh, you can do appliances and then simulate different scenarios and present that to you, either for your cell analysis or present it to your patient and say, would you like this finish or would you like that finish? So that's a powerful tool. Superimposition, again, fairly basic tool, but you can see where you are based on where you're going. And it's, it's very important, I think, again, when you're placing attachments. Super Ceph, that's a very cool marketing tool. You can superimpose your models fairly accurately, I might say, over the initial Ceph. 
and kind of show the patient what it's going to look like. It's quite effective as a marketing tool. All right, so you can, and then of course you generate this uh, the the steps for the aligners. You can you can control. Although so far I haven't played around too much with the actual parameters. You know how how much each step can uh, rotate or move, because I kind of trust that the, uh, they've done their homework with, with the standard one. You can customize as you get better and better. Say you know I, I want the rotation to be less than 0.3 or more than a 0.5 of a degree and you uh, set the parameters yourself. So as you get better and better at what you do and you get your preferences, this is where you can control it. I don't uh, use this. This is for generating and if you still want to do this, you can. This is terrific. Um, if you want to do fixed appliance still and have indirect placement instead of sending it to the lab, you can actually generate one of these things, place your brackets and do a suck down and you have an indirect a placement. Now, in my course, I'm very strictly going to concentrate on sequential aligners only. I no longer, I mean, I've, I've been, I have placed fixed appliances for over 20 years and I think I'm really, I'm over it. I'm over having, uh, you know, uh, afternoon wrecked by somebody coming in with three brackets off and I've only put 20 minutes for a wire change and you know, an hour later we put all the three brackets back on. So, um, and that sentiment has been shared to me by uh, uh, a very prominent orthodontist as well. Said, well his practice, he says, is now going to be, he said that to me a year and a half ago. He said, within five years, none of my practices will have a wires. It'll all be sequential aligners. Attachment will form one whole module by itself. Okay, so it's important. Um, and... The labeling is a practical thing. You need to label those aligners when they come out. Otherwise, uh, there's no way to telling, oh, uh, you know, tray one to tray ten. Uh, okay. So, I'm going back to my. Um, bear with me, guys. I'm going to quickly see. Ah, here you go. Well done. So what's next? So AutoLine, this software, it's responsive. It gives you responsiveness and efficiency. What I mean by that is if you do a third party uh, application of what you do, they really expect you to go from, you know, tray one to tray 30 and do it all in one go. Oh no, they do give you uh, refinements. But how does refinement work? Pretty much the same as the first case, you scan it, you send it away, you have to approve it. It takes, what, two weeks? Even a week. It takes me overnight when I do it myself. And because you're responsive, you can actually have better control. When it takes two weeks, a turnaround time for something that's gone wrong to come back to you, you kind of lose control. It's kind of like trying to uh, control the Mars rover and go click, 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 turn left. And about two days later, it comes back and says, have I turned left? All right, so. It's responsive and therefore it's efficient. It's cost effective because it, well, I won't go do analysis now. It definitely is very, very much cost effective to do the, to make the little aligners yourself. And because of this, there's a really high rate of uh, patient conversion. If I can predict for you a problem, as you get proficient in uh, making the aligners, you your rate of conversion will overtake your ability to make the uh, uh, aligners as you stand. What I mean is like when I first started out doing it, as, as you will, is you're probably just using your spare time or your spare staff time to do it. I assure you, if you do this properly in a very short amount of time, and this is something that's repeated over with all over the world when you talk to people that are doing this, is that you will run into that problem. Everybody says it's a good problem to have, but it is nevertheless a problem. It's kind of like project management. Unlike other treatment in orthodontic, uh, in dentistry, where, you know, a crown is two appointments. Maybe I do CAT cam, it's all in one appointment. Um, root canal therapy, three appointments. Ortho is over months, and you've got to control this over months. So 
in the final uh, course, I will introduce you to a management system. It's kind of a, my legacy of uh, being a system analyst. It is very important for this to work that you have a great management system. Uh, and I, I have one that's working very, very effectively. So you need a, a, a management system to control practically something I can do from home, uh, from office, um, manage multiple cases. I have probably 30 cases going at the moment. While I was uh, practicing using Invisalign, I remember all those years ago, when I got more than six, seven, eight cases going, it was becoming a little bit too much to control where everything was. I don't know how people did it. But anyway, there was a platinum pr uh, practitioner next door to me. And every time I got uh, three or four boxes, the, the guy had 30. Uh, I don't know, the wheels did fall, fall off after a while. But yes, uh, if integral to our course will be the management of multiple cases when you get there. But I envisage that if, if this is done properly, we all should get there fairly quickly. Okay, anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about the course itself. Uh, am I, let me just see. Give me a second, guys. We'll just take stock of where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, that's correct. So the course uh, that I'm, I'm in, uh, developing um, is a, it's meant to be a, a hands-on, face-on, you know, a course that would, would go, say, over 12 months. Right now, though, because of our current COVID situation, we've developed like an online immersion pro, uh, version. It is comprehensive in coverage, but not enough depth. Um, Kevin has advised me that, you know, uh, doing a couple of hours at a time is probably more than people want to do. It's, it's not as if I can get you in front of a terminal for a, a whole day to do this, but it's supposed to be like a, a deep uh, wetting of your appetite and uh, picking your interest. But it's enough for you to actually do something with. It's five two hourly two hourly uh, webinars. Uh, uh, AO's creed is my vision to develop a community of general practitioners providing quality, affordable orthodontics with in-house aligners. All right, the, co the course will provide mentoring and. I'm, I have planned to meet monthly as a user group or a study group for the, and when the COVID uh, 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 meets, we'll actually meet face to face, but it's possible that we'll develop this where we actually meet like this. Uh, I have uh, plans in place to think about how to do so, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So an overview of the course. Five courses, five modules. <sighs> okay, by the end of the course, you should have the ability to prepare a case through to digital planning, case presentation, treatment phase, and of course, the fabrication of the liners. Right? You should know those things. Uh, my teaching style, it will, will be to have a white exposure iteratively. So I, I'm not gonna, you're not going to have to wait till module three or four before you actually do something. I actually want you guys to actually be seeing patients or doing a case, and we might finish the case by the end of module five, but you will start doing a case earlier on. Iteratively go back and back and back, and each time I go uh, through the module, it, it'll be in greater depth. Uh, the course is designed for practicing dentists, and it will be pragmatic. Uh, you know, it's meant to be problem-solving. The theory is not covered, uh, it, sorry, the theory is covered, but not dwelled upon, okay? But the dental legal preoperative record keeping is stressed upon. As much for the legacy of our overzealous orthodontic colleagues, as it is to protect ourselves from the few litigious oddballs around. So, as I said before, the two hour uh, webinar is pre pretty much uh, due to the COVID. Right. And uh, it's it's a 
most practical way. I've talked to a few dentists uh, interstate and they say, you know, you've got to do it online, you've got to do it online because what choice do we have? We're not going to wait until this is over and um, it'll get us something to do. But definitely when it's over, I'm excited to meet all, all of you. Face-to-face -face meeting is uh, definitely planned for, for post-lockdown. We had, in fact, one successful face-to-face -face launch in Sydney. And we had a plan after that to go to Melbourne, which was last June, which was postponed to July and in August and now indefinitely. And we even had plans to go to Brisbane. But that's why, for now, this will have to do and we'll just uh, gather momentum slowly. You know, quickly just, well, not quickly, but have a quick overview of the course content. In the first course, again, I want to throw everybody in a deep end. It'll be a comp comprehensive overview, very similar to what I'm doing now, but in greater detail, right? You will look at Alter Line. You will look at the program. I will uh, give you a case, this particular case, actually, that you're looking at right now, because for some, it's a very... This young child has diastomus, so segmenting these teeth will be very quick. You'll appreciate what I'm talking about when you're, when you're doing it. So you'll very quickly segment this case, and we'll then go and fix this case. Um, we will also talk, because I want cases to be started, so I will talk uh, about preoperative records. I'll talk about, uh, you know, the CEFs, the uh, photographs. Whether or not this, uh, are it won't be something that I can talk in depth about because it's a two-hour bloody appointment, so, I mean, webinar. So there's no point, uh, there's no scope for me to teach you everything with regards to that. But we, we can talk about it. And if need be, I will develop uh, or put, you know, a basic photography course on. I might actually see if I can allude now very quickly to um, uh, how I do it. Just hang on one second and see if I can get this up. Yeah, so this is a website called Ugwe. It was developed for orthodontics. And if you think I take such beautiful photograph every single time, you're wrong. <laughs> the website allows you to <clears throat> okay to orientate uh, crop so uh, when I used to use fix ortho I used this every single time the patient came in uh, they had this taken but with uh, fix ortho it was quite rewarding because you could see the you know, uh, straight Y technique work really really quickly um, I don't, I don't want to go through that and show off that now, but this is just to show you that it's still quite relevant in application. Let's just look at the left and right side um, and show you this particular case where I used the carrier appliance what I was describing to you before. Look at the date. This is one month and what, six weeks? Look at the canine correction with this appliance. It's amazing. Okay, this, this one is not quite there, but still it's quite significantly corrected. Right? This is one of the reasons why I start think, started thinking, hey, listen, uh, sequential alignments can work. If I can do AP correction so easily, the rest is easy with sequential aligners. Anyway, I digress slightly. Can I go back? Yes, I can. So... Module two, taking uh, uh, again, we are doing iteratively, but every time I go back to do uh, the, it, it, it's all based around auto line the, uh, the software. This time in the beginning, because I want you guys to have started your case. In fact, if time permits, because I don't know what this is going to do in two hours, is that I'm going to get you guys to start your own cases and we can actually work through the cases individual, uh, for each of your cases. Uh, when we start the second module, the pre-processing of the modules will be added to the the uh, the session, and then we'll go back to order line again in greater detail. 
And I'll finish off the module with the introduction again to uh, the requirements of, of the um, pre-ortho records that I mentioned before. Uh, consent forms and, and all this stuff. Again, it's stressed upon because, you know what, I've been practicing through all this period where, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's important. Cover yourself. So that's your second module. Basically, first module again with the with more details, but with the pre-processing of the records, like your mod the models that you bring in has to be processed in a way. Um, it's very important for the smooth implementation of your aligners. I'll, I'll give you a, a taste of what I'm talking about. If you have unusually difficult undercuts, block them off. You don't want to produce 30 trays with undercuts because it's hard to take them out on and off. Anyway. If, if you might understand it, but uh, it's important. And the third module, we now get very specific. Okay, if you consider AutoLine, the software, as the main body of the delivery system of sequential aligners, then the backbone of the whole processes, the whole process, is the attachments. These are the handles. These are the framework with which the aligner is used to move the tip. In module three, we will use the tools to plan around the orthodontic movement and any of the attachment planning. Uh, and, and it's a science to it, and I, I quite enjoy this part of the, uh, the course uh, and, and implementing it. It's not, you know, it's not meant to be easy, guys. If, uh, if, you, if you thought it's just press one button and everything is done, then, you know, the smile club people are right. A bypass the dentist, you know, the middleman, will just come to us and will charge you nothing and you will just do it yourself. To do it properly, this is where we earn our money. Okay, this is where there is a science to it. This is where uh, you can be a little bit more, there's more precision in what you do and this is where professionally it becomes quite rewarding to do. These buttons, these attachments, right, um, are important. I don't know if you noticed that this is my style of doing it. I've, I, I will teach, I will show you all the uh, protocols of the establishments, of the established people, you know, the one that starts with I. <laughs> um, I will, because I'm familiar with them. But I have these ideas which uses only one type of attachment that will do the same thing. It's easier to learn. Um, you're still open to use the other ones, but I think uh, keep it easy. The KISS uh, protocol. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, number four. How do you get the full potential out of AutoLine? AutoLine has very sexy functions, right? I mean, I alluded to the one before where you can superimpose your set, and this is a marketing thing, but it's important. Um, when you flash one of these things through, and you can actually now sell cases at, uh, at an appropriate uh, fee. And if I, I, if I like the patient, I can actually say, yeah, look, we'll do it for that. And you, you know they'll accept it. Um, and you can do it still profitably. Uh, prof profitably. Um, it wasn't you know, that practical back in the days where if you do it for fixed supplies, it costs, say, X dollars. But if you want to do the same case with Invisalign, you got to add three grand to it, two grand to it. It's like, oh, wow. So at this stage, we can explore things like staging, where I was saying before, it's like traffic control. Okay? We can um, make certain teeth move out of the way first before a certain teeth, uh, other teeth. Establish protocols for that, like for instance, where you do extraction mechanics and your your fours are gone, and how you have to move the threes back first before you close the space. Those things this software will allow you to do. Different child diagnosis we alluded to before, right? So this is the one I showed you before, where we are able to say, okay, fine, we'll move this stage first. But of course, I didn't do this with, with sequential aligners. But I actually planned for it. I actually said, if this thing moved into this position, and then the rest of it, and I showed it to the patient, and the patient said, that's a great idea. Um, and of course, now we get right down to the nitty-gritty. Nitty you want to do 
uh, in-house printing, by all means. It is, but let me say from the outset, you don't have to. It's kind of fun. Uh, and if you find that, you know, the, the control part is already important enough, if you can control the, the case uh, using Invisalign, you're kind of like more than halfway there. Already. This is just the icing on the cake. This is the ability to turn around something and say, oh, I can do it for you next day if I wanted to. But if you don't, we always have Kevin. <laughs> and Kevin has promised to back us up by uh, saying, okay, we're, we're going to make sure that we have provision, uh, the ability to produce these things for you, um, you know, at a cost effective and fair cost to him, but turn it around quickly. It doesn't have to come from Mexico or Santa Barbara or, or Santa Fe, whatever the, cent the three centers are. It's quick and we can get it quickly, then we can use it. The way I would say as a uh, hybrid uh, um, arrangement is that, you know, when it's quiet, you can do it yourself. If you get overload, the overload can go to, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, CM Medical, and then they can produce the overload. If the system is the way I'm going to set it up, I already said to uh, Kevin in planning, he said, if the system is set up in the way that I envisage, which is this software that you see, uh, that I've, I've put up here to show you, uh, it's practical. In fact, when originally uh, Kevin asked me, hey, can you, uh, you do this thing and mentor and whatnot? I said, well, oh, gosh, you know, uh, how do I do that? How do I get uh, uh, people to, to, to uh, send cases across properly? I do have the ability to do that now. And plus, that software that you saw before with the f photography, that was mine. I developed that. I haven't marketed it for anything because I just used it for myself, but it's, I've used it for years. It's, it's useful. Um, so 3D printing um, uh, and ultimately the, uh, the, the 3D printing is, is an uh, is art in itself. Now when you master something, and can, can I tell you that it's not uh, as if I'm going to teach you how to 3D print and you're not going to have any problems. I think if I teach you 3D printing, it'll be because, and you would have mastered it when, when you know that anything goes wrong, I know what that is and I know how to fix it because things will go wrong. And I don't care how much you pay for your 3D printer. May I say, when I first started out doing this, it was very cautiously. I'm a very cautious person. I spent $200. I, I bought one of the cheapest printer you can buy and I made it work. I struggled, but I made it work. Then I bought a slightly better one. And I, I struggled less, and I still make it work. And then until I realized, hey, I'm getting a, a business issue. The this, this small printer can't print fast enough for me. And I went to Kevin and said, Kevin, help. And Kevin gave me a bigger printer, and now I can print faster. Okay. Do we have problems? Of course we have problems. We all have problems. You look at the uh, printing community, and they all have problems, and they all have solutions. So what I say to you is that currently I'm on a good run at the moment. I, you know, I don't know, half a dozen run with no problems because every time there was a problem, we had to go figure it out. And as I said to you, the, the uh, COVID situation has actually been a blessing in disguise. It gave me time to take that problem because I got so much time on my hands when lockdown to say, what the hell's happened? And I figured out most of it. I figured out at the moment, I think all of it. So that it's not that I can stop you from having problems, but maybe Every problem has a solution now, and uh, yeah, and there's lots of good tips I can uh, uh, pass on to you guys. So at the end of it, workload control. Workload is going to, as I said before, it's going to be a problem, but it's a good problem to have. Yeah, having too much uh, sequential aligners. Um, one of the foremost expert or, or experienced person in America had said this: it's a good problem to have. What he did, did was he hired completely a new staff member that just did sequential alliance all day. I don't know. That, that's a possible solution. The other thing is just handle as much as you can and ask Kevin to do the overflow. Clearly, if you're continually uh, overloaded, you can justify getting a full-time person in there doing it. By all means. By all means. And maybe I'll get there soon. Okay. But uh, let me see what's next. Yeah. Remember, though, by the time we get to the phase where um, 
uh, we're printing the aligners directly, it may well be practical just to do it yourself. Having said that, printing uh, with the resin, all that kind of stuff, you need room. You know, I, I'm spoiled. I've got a converted house where I practice. I don't have a good, complete room to myself to do all this. If you don't have the room as well, it may again be not practical and you might do the small loads and instead of being uh, uh, geared to making 30 aligners a week, when it gets too busy, hand it over. Say, help Kevin, and he'll come running. Okay, what's next? I think we are done. And so, uh, okay, so I, at this point, I'm going to go show you uh, the software, uh, the actual software to, to, um, to play with. And I've got a case all lined up to go. Are we there? Yes, we are. Can you see that? Kevin, are we good? Yes, it's very good. And yeah. also, uh, may I stop you a little bit because I do. We do have like one question. Um, yeah. The question is about like a pre-work before um, clear lineup, and um, um, probably um, he um, is talking about um, um, a lineup production before um, you know pre-work. And would you tell us? Uh, what kind of like in you know, a pre work um, may need pre, pre processing? That's right, pre work and pre processing yeah. before the uh, clear aligner. Okay, so I don't know if, if you guys have ever made uh, in house uh, aligners of any kind, not aligners, but uh, clear uh, retainers, you'll appreciate that anything that's uh, have excessive undercut is really difficult for the patient to uh, take in and out. So blocking undercut, pre-processing involves blocking of undercuts. Um, some people have also say perio spaces in between, you've got to block those off. You, when you have an extraction site and the interproximal areas uh, uh, of the embrasure area where the tooth is uh, very um, you know, curved, you will have undercuts, you have to block those off. I can't just think of a case, I've got a million cases, I can't think of one to, to show you, but um, all these cases that you see, all these models, those undercuts have already been blocked off. Clearly, if you don't block them off, uh, and then you print uh, you know, 10 models, every single one of those models, you have to go in and, and, and put resin in the undercuts. No, 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 that's not the way to do it. You block it off at the beginning, and every single one that you produce will have the undercuts already taken up. You get better at better at this. Trust me, when you when you struggle with uh, you know, the first few that you did, it's like, oh, damn it, I forgot to put undercut, block the undercut. And it's worth spending a bit of time, you know, we're talking about an extra 10 minutes, looking at the undercuts going, nah, nah, nah. Uh, I will uh, show you famously, uh, uh, there was uh, a video showing two nurses doing, uh, making uh, clear liners, and it was kind of a time test. One of them did it in one and a half minutes. That's amazing. Bang, bang, bang. We, we take about four minutes to do one, which is still amazing, but one and a half minutes, bang, 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 bang. It's the same, the nurse of the same person I referred to before. Um, sorry, I should give him some credit, but I can't remember his name at the moment. Ferguson, Dr. Ferguson, anyway. But his partner's nurse did it in 30 seconds. Crap, I looked at it and thought, what the hell? And if you look closely, what it is was she either very cleverly picked the case that had no undercuts or she was clever enough to block all the undercuts. Now in America, the nurses scan as well. And so I say to you, as you become better at this and you scan the cases and you produce the case and you run and, you know, or you come to uh, our courses, we'll show you how to make those Invisalign, those, Invisalign, those uh, aligners come in and out easier and still move teeth. So the pre-processing involves that on a very basic uh, level. And also when you scan, ah, sometimes there are problems. There's sometimes there are holes that you don't see. Again, I use mesh mixer, uh, which I, I don't want to uh, waste time here on. Mesh mixer has an analysis tool. And just before I finish anything, I hit the analysis tool. So show me any small holes that I can't see, fix it, bang, gone, done. And I've cut down the process. I used to do so much more. Then I realized I can stop at a certain point and let Ultraline take care of the rest. And it's a much more uh, efficient process. 
but pre-processing of those models are important. And also, when you realize what you can get away with, when you're scanning, you don't have to be that critical. You know, uh, like, uh, oh, yeah, there's a little bit missing there, but it's in the undercut, and you know you're going to block it off anyway, so forget that, keep going. All right, for those of you who scan digitally, digital scanning, guys, much better than taking a bloody alginate or a PBS because uh, I don't make mistakes in uh, digital. What do you mean mistakes? I miss the spot? Well, you just go back to the spot. You miss a spot with your PBS, you start again, right? And I think somebody's worked out before, isn't it? That one of these PBS, every single one of them is 50 bucks worth. So yeah, kind of like penny, uh, wise pound before. foolish. Yeah. Um, probably I may um, question a little bit. I may misunderstand the question. Um, the question from Dr. Park was um, the correction of class two patient, mm -hmm. which Dr. Hall pre work for correction of class two with the functional appliance first. Yep, yep, yep. By using clear liner as case with the uh, uh, female patient. And you know that's the how you know that is the you know the cast in the original question. What well, what was the actual question? How do I do it? Yes, um, is that the pre work? Um, I guess um, I can invite Dr. Jin Yong Park to yes. ask you directly, and you can you know please um, you know please um, please you. please. <clears throat> It'd be nice to see some faces, guys, because I so much, so at the moment I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> and after that, we do have another one more question. Okay. Sorry, you want to ask that question, Dr. Park? Hey, you're you're still a mute. Dr. Park, yes, you know you can unmute. You need I to unmute. Mute. Yes, yes, you to unmute. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, I just hi. yeah. Hi, uh, thank you for your time and then your presentation. Are you show sure, show us that uh, the female the patients you just show that. Yeah, and, uh, you using it seems to be using both of the clear liner and then the functional appliance to correct the class two, and the usually you do before the clear liner setup or just like a you utilize with the clear liner. Yeah, you can either use okay that that thing at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Look up the Carrier uh, Motion Two appliance, right? Yes, the clear liner there is actually supposed to be just a static appliance it's just a retainer right. but there's no reason why it can't do clear alignment as well mm -hmm. the ap correction anthroposphere yep. correction right. is addressed first right uh, and basically if you don't do that when you're pulling on the sixes you pull the sixes right out mm -hmm. okay the retainer there and it's this is not going to do with a sequential alignment. it's more to do with uh, the the carrier appliance mm -hmm. is to hold the 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 molar applies because it's a class three version as well right. to hold it in position otherwise you'll throw the arch out mm -hmm. um uh, the, the the alternative to doing that with carrier appliance is putting um tags in which it's not really uh you know very easy to, to sell the idea and i don't like it anyway not on young kids so that works really well you saw that appliance i mean that, that was amazing and I, i've been told before i even started now, let me tell you one and a half years ago Dr. Derek Mahoney, I didn't mention his name before, I was doing his course on carrier appliance. He said because of this appliance, he predicted that in five years' time, I will not have any more fixed appliances in my practices. Shish, really? And he's right. If you can fix AP that easily, then what do you need? I mean, back in the days when they were trying to put hooks on your clear liners and, and do class 2 elastics, and that doesn't work. This does. Now, having said that, please don't think it works every single time. I had an adult patient in that apply. It does work. Let me tell you it works. But it doesn't work that quickly every single time. Right. It's still the mechanics. Um, patient was uh, uh, chronic uh, mandibular advancement, uh, yeah, snore guard wearer, and his teeth was into class three. And I noticed that, but he's been a long-term patient. He knew, I knew he was class one. I had photos to prove it. And I said, God, your teeth are moved. And it was the appliance. I had to correct the class three, and it took nearly 12 months with the appliance, but it still fixed it. So you can just using both at the same time. Uh, you, well, primary, well yeah, you don't yeah. do the top. Right. You don't do the top. If, if you read up on the, uh, 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 the, the, the one that you're pulling backwards will create a gap right. mesial to the canine. 
what you're using the bottom one for is to hold the molar so it doesn't fly out of the arch. Right. But while you're doing that, there's nothing to stop you from correcting the anterior. And I, that's what I sometimes do. I just kill two birds with one stone and say, fine, every, every few weeks just change that one too. And, and while you're pulling the, uh, correcting the class two, the canine, you know, class two canine position, okay. you might as well do something with uh, uh, aligning the anterior. And it, that, that does help. When I do a carrier appliance, and that uh, case is actually here as well, um, uh, when she finished with the AP correction is right. when I go in and do the setup, mm -hmm. right? So she was clearly class two. And by the time I start, started this case, she's no longer class two. That's yeah. class one, yeah. molar class one, canine class one. Now, all I have to do, well, all I have to do, there's still a huge open bite, um, is correct that, right? See how, how where she started? Right. Right, so actually, this is not aligned properly. So, yeah. So, I you I didn't start sequential align aligners until I got the AP corrected. This is the bite that she has now. But you saw the bite before photographically. It was class class two, severe class two. Yeah. Just I gotta the clock the, uh, the 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 my charger first. I'm sorry. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, when I just look at the photo that you have, and then uh, you're using the bottom for the clear liner with us, uh, the upper uh, the appliances. So that's the reason why I'm asking about the using together. Yeah. So this is like uh, the, the pre-op canines right on top of each other. Right, right. This is what, 12, what, two months? I don't know when I started. The pre-op doesn't mean I started straight away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I probably did start. So this is two months into it. Yeah. Uh, it didn't move linearly, obviously. So this, I told you this is my software, right? So I stepped across. So that is February. This is now March. And suddenly it went click. Right. And this, start, this side was a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Eventually we got there. Let's keep going. Ah, I, I debonded already. But that's see that's already on over yeah, the top. Yeah, yeah. that's class one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it's the previous picture actually shows that you have uh, the bottom one for the clear liners, but it's no upper. But that's the yeah. Picture. But it's not. It's not. Being, it's not uh, remember, uh, I'm saying to you, it's yeah. not a clear aligner. It doesn't have to be a clear liner. Yeah, just like purely a, when you're doing this part, this is just a retainer. But yeah, you can correct yeah, if you, you want can to. Just the uh, the the maintainer, the bottoms, but actually you can just uh, retrograde it for the the upper. Upper Correct. Uh, anteriors, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So, I mean, this is just by the by, instead of wasting time, might as well do that what, what, you know, while she's doing this, kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. Theoretically speaking, you just do a fix uh, one and then don't worry about it, correct the AP first. Yeah. <clears throat> this is what you can do when you do your own aligners. You can actually, you know, if you were doing this and you had to pay a third party, what the hell would you do that for? You wouldn't. Yeah, well, I, I would because yeah, I reckon yeah. it's gonna be a lot faster once you just set up your aligner. Then probably it's gonna be a lot easier to get. Still got the you know space you can gain them for the maxilla. Yeah, but if probably. you use a third party, right. you will have to pay for that. Right. And your minimum fee for how many trays is that? This thing finished in three months. How many trays are you gonna do? You're gonna do all six trays because you're not. Yeah. When this is finished, when the AP is finished, then I actually started sequential aligners proper. Mm -hmm. That's why when you do it yourself and you got control. You can afford to do that because you only pay for what aligners you need. Sure. Because when when I finish this phase, when I finish this part here, and of course I haven't taken any more photos or anything. When I actually got to class one here, and now she starts in a sequential aligners proper. I scanned again, and I started now sequential aligners by by yeah both arch simultaneously now. To go and, and finish this. Finishing in about how long is roughly taking after your corrections AP? Well, this is actually a case, not for beginners, I can tell you. Uh, it, it's that um, this is an anterior open bite. Right. And I only did it because I, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with this patient and, um, and she's compliant. She's very good. Mm -hmm. So you, you note here, I, I don't know if you can see my screen, I had done um, one. Okay, this here I set up just for the fun of it because I was going to show you guys if I had time. I don't think I'll have time. Um, or this will be the one I'll do when I'm teaching the course. We did post CM2, post carrier motion two appliance. This is already in class one. 
I'm just closing space. I'm just closing uh, the, the open bite. So stage one, they call it layer. Stage one, I'm consolidating. I can't remember now. I'm consolidating the posterior, putting it all down. Okay. Yeah. And then when I finish, bang, everything's, I just closed everything down. Okay, and you can do that with this uh, software. You can actually say, look, what's important? Just get those things out of my way first, the posterior, lock them in, pull the front teeth down. Yeah. Do whatever you want. But uh, you- It's the same way as the, uh, you're just like a conventional way to just brace it. Just lock in the posterior and then just like uh, moving the anterior after that, probably slide Correct. Out. Yeah. Yeah, correct, correct. So you can do all this. now. In, in the past, when you got class two mechanics and, and, and Invisalign was trying to tell you to put little hooks on your trays and then like, pull it back, oh, yeah, I suppose it does work, but jeepers, it was hard. It's going to be, it's going to be ages, yeah. Just, yeah, it's gonna yeah. Be, you know, and compliance and compliance and compliance. It was very easy. Compliance with the um, carry appliance is actually quite high because there's not, nothing more than those two hooks. Right. And how old is Patience? She is 13. 13, yeah. I think that that's the reason why it's going to be a lot faster moving for the, you, you, you can correct the APs a lot faster than others. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's amazing when I, yeah. I, you know, I, when, when I started doing Invisalign, after a few years of doing fixed appliance, I got a bit disillusioned with all the body pop brackets coming through okay. and I explored uh, Invisalign. And then after a while of Invisalign, I got a disillusion with that too. It's like, oh, I can't control this. This guy, you know, every time you're know, scanning and you can't do AP correction, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. When I saw Carrier, things fell into place. Click, click. And when Mah D Derek Mahoney, you know Derek Mahoney, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know him quite well too. So when he said, in five years, none of my practice is going to have fixed appliance, I thought, ah, he, that's, that's significant what he's saying. Now, I say to you, with AO, there's a difference. We're not going to be relying on third party. Mm -hmm. I can fix those lower ones as I'm using AP. Why? Because I can, right? Because it takes me a scan and print a few, maybe four or five trays. Uh, and it costs me 12 bucks each to print one of those trays. And it's, as you said, it makes a significant difference while we're waiting for the AP correction. I'm correcting some of the lower interior. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the efficiencies that I'm referring to. So, yeah, look, yes, did I say it was going to be yeah. easy to introduce this stuff? No, there's a learning curve, but it's yeah. really rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's really, really amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thanks and, for your question. Yes, and we do have two more questions. Um, you know, one, um, uh, first question is about how much time are you spending on, on, to, uh, on the prep work? Um, onto software before you're ready to print. You know, that is the first question. And second question is about the, um, the material flexibility comparing to Invision Line, you know, Invision Line, uh, Invision Line alignment. Uh, very good question. Very good question. Look, it depends on the case. Some cases are simple and you, you work it. Roughly, I'd say, I, I can turn a push, I can turn a case around for presentation overnight, which is, I think I've worked it out to be two hours hour and a half, right? If it's a really, really seriously big uh, 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 case, like, um, you know, the extraction one, I have to experiment with a few things and whatnot. I might do two or three scenarios. It might take three hours, not long, but two hours is a long time. It's, yeah, but you work out how much uh, it is when you actually do the approval with a, yeah, a third party case. It's about the same, really. You, if you're not doing about the same, you're not doing your case, uh, what, any, um, you're not doing the work you're supposed to do with the case. Just because somebody moves it for you doesn't make it much easier. You still have to analyze the movement of the team. And I would argue that when you see the case in the original position and you actually move it, you are actually better analyzing it than when somebody's changed it for you already. Um, so about two, one and a half to two hours, the average case. One and a half to two hours easily. It would it'd be more than an hour. Yeah, it it be more than an hour, an hour and a half, um, maybe because I'm doing it. I, I'm doing a, a, a few now. Now that takes it to the uh, a situation where you can then present it to the patient. So thereafter, I told you the backbone of the whole process is putting the attachment on. The attachment you can spend about an hour on, depending on how many attachments you want to put on. 
But let me have a look at this case here. This one here would have a lot of attachments. And why isn't it showing up? I'll just show you another one that I know has Oliver Brighton. Okay, now it's a very significant component. It's, uh, I think uh, module number five, where I show people how to put a, uh, appliance um, attachments on. You can spend up to an hour doing this because when you're doing this, I'm analyzing the original position of the tooth. I'm looking at, I'm looking at this. I love doing this instead of any reports. I think reports give you an indication, and I will show you the reports in a second. But this. It's how I like to do my placement. I want to do this and go, what the heck is moving a lot? I'll do this part here and say, where the heck should I do this? Look at this. Okay, the sevenths are being pushed downwards. Okay, the um, the centrals, that's amazing, the, the amount of movement I have to do there. Okay, so subsequently, subsequently when I'm putting this on, uh, it's reflected by where I put all my, my, sorry, this one here, all right? I want to speak to uh, <laughs> Dicor and ask him to give me that sliding tool here. I actually much prefer to do this visually. See this tooth movement? That's why I have one here. See this movement here? This two is moving buckly. That's why I have one there. Okay. Now the other way to do it is to actually look at the report. And I won't show you that report. I'll show you the the report I've already processed. Give me one second. It's a PDF file. Uh, where are we, Oliver? Sorry guys, your your face is all over my files at the moment. I can't see my things. Okay, you go. All right. There are certain protocols. This is the uh, the maxilla, and this is a summary of the movements that was generated by AutoLine. It's telling me that, for instance, there's 3.6 degrees minus negative torque, 4.9. 11 degrees on the central, 11 degrees on the other central. Okay, all these things. And I'll teach you about the parameters, what the values are that actually then you say, okay, fine, I gotta watch for these. Now, the reds are the thing, I just go quickly, go bang, 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 bang. They, they, they're the ones I want to watch. And when I watch the video, I say, nah, see, even though this is uh, the, the protocol here, which is uh, uh, the torque is 11, I didn't concentrate on the torque because I figured that the rotation and the in extrusion is more important. So that is where I put my, uh, my um, I design my uh, uh, attachment to do. Invisalign has a protocol, and I tell you, protocols is just a rule of thumb, okay? Invisalign will say, I think the first thing is extraction, which I agree, extraction so uh, space has to be primary, and then they go, uh, this movement, the um, mesial distal movements are next most important. And forget that. Um, if the teeth are rotated, those are the hardest ones to move. I want to move that first. So it's experience, it's my feel for it, and uh, uh, Invisalign gives you a guideline. I will look at those. I mean, it's stupid not to, to try to reinvent the wheel, uh, and not I'm not that arrogant to think, oh, I know better than them. I don't know better than them, but I do have some experience. And Doing it this way too, you guys can build your own experience. The other thing too is you've got a patient in front of you. Who, whatever the technician is that's working you know, in, in, in Mexico has digital files in front of them. Okay, so you as the clinician can have better control. Like I said, if it's so simple, uh, then the small uh, uh, direct club who is advertising uh, to, to, to the public say, cut out the middleman meaning us, just come to us, we'll scan, we'll give you the trade. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. Um, so yeah, 
So these, uh, the answer to the question is, an hour and a half, two hours for pre case presentation, probably another hour, it depends on how many of these things you have to put on, how many of these uh, attachments you're going to put on, probably another hour to determine where you're going to put this uh, attachment. Now, maybe I have, this is where I'd say we earn our money, right? This is where we go, okay, this will work, this just won't work. This is where you, uh, you find it professionally, um, professionally uh, rewarding when you go, yep, I think I can do this. Very subtle, right? I don't know that if you've seen many attachments set up like this ones, but I argue with you, for instance, uh, I, I do know why they do it. Most protocols for attachments are on the buckle side <laughs> because it's annoying on the lingual side. I stuff it. I'm not here to make it comfortable. Uh, you know, it's meant to be comfortable. I mean, facetious. But I want the tooth to move efficiently. Why is it that people do rotations all from the buckle side only? Because when you turn something, you want to turn it from both sides, yeah? Isn't this a much more efficient uh, protocol? Sorry, men mendable. All right. We twist them. It's a screwing effect. <laughs> anyway, I, I digress. I, I I'm get a little bit excited about it. But yeah, not only the turning force, but also the angle you turn in. You can then not only derotate, but you can also extrude at the same time. Uh, why? Uh, have a look at this, right? Yes, I'll show you. There is a plethora. Outline gives you all this <laughs> to choose from. Um, can I say to you, um, those sharp angles, those, and I used to use those a lot. I mean, they, they all work. I mean, you can put a dab of anything that, that's, that's, that's yeah, undercut, it'll work. But those little sharp angles, they're sometimes very, very hard to, for the patient to get them over. I kind of decided these rounded ones, they're the important ones. The rounded ones are important because you can slip them through very easily. But what actually makes attachment works are the flat surfaces, but they all have flat surfaces, but only some of them have round surfaces to help push them in. So I've thought of this idea where we only use the ones that can be slid in easily, but I'll make those things work just like the other ones or the equivalent. So far, knock on wood, fairly successful. But, you know, the thing is that uh, I don't have time to do an a, a analysis study, a PhD on this, but you, you guys, our community can be, you know, that's why I say I want to start a community where you guys use this, we have the same tools, and we can say, listen, I, I did this, and I think this worked quite well. It's not going to work with every case. Some of these teeth, I, I don't know how many uh, uh, cases you guys have done in ortho before. Uh, be aware, I've moved teeth before with wires, and everything moves bar one. Ankylosis. How do you diagnose for that? You can't. It's only when it didn't move, you go tap, tap, tick, tick. Oh, that tube's ankylosed. So that can happen, right? But overall, I'm, I'm comfortable enough now over, with over 25 years of ortho to say, I'm going to do it this way from now on. I'm not going to have my afternoon wrecked by kids walking in with four brackets broken off when I only wanted to change the arch wire for 10 minutes and suddenly I'm running 20 minutes behind because I've got brackets to put back on. Um, yeah, it's fun. Um, Sequential you, uh, line is fun. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry for interrupt. Uh, I do, we do have another um, the last question. Um, the question is from Dr. Anna Lee. As an Invision Line provider, I like the material flexibility of Invision Line aligners. Sorry, How does that this aligner material compare? Correct. And I wish I could actually. I might actually have it on my fingertip, right? I I might have it on my fingertip. I might, I might. Bear with me. All I'll say to you is that everybody will say mine is better than yours. Okay. But Invisalign actually is proprietary stuff and they say mine is better than yours, but I won't tell you what it is. I'm just saying it's better. Okay. The only study I've, uh, I've found is they did all of these material, all of these materials. Let me just see. Sorry. Now this is this is the way I live my life. This is, uh, it's called ClickUp, guys, explore it. I'll tell you more about it when I, yeah. I'm excited to tell you, this is course number five. Uh, ClickUp, 
I get my kids all, I say, you've got to live with ClickUp, right? ClickUp is very, very, very useful. Uh, if I can find it, 3D printing, mesh mixer, data view, segment and share, not merger. Okay, while I'm looking at it, I'll, I'll talk what I'm doing, looking for. I found articles comparing the pros and cons. They're all hygroscopic plastics. They all deteriorate after you put them in the mouth. They deteriorate at a different rate, and therefore they'll say mine is better because they deteriorate less. But they all deteriorate; they all get softened. I, I, I have a graph somewhere. Sorry, I'm not set up for this lecture here. This is supposed to be a 40-minute thing. But you see all the graph; they go very strong, and then they die off, right? And they die off, and they uh, and they get hygroscopically soft. Um, and, and so, if you've got a better one, it might take a longer time to die off. Is it a good thing, bad thing? Who knows? Right? Who knows? Because at the end of it, we're not using this for more than a week or two. Okay? So we swap them around. We swap them around. So the fact that it has a better property, the argument is what is better? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying uh, uh, one way or the other. All I'll say to you is that the study that I found, uh, uh, when they study this thermal plastic, they look at those properties. They work, look at the... Uh, um, the ability to flex and whatever, but one of the things they look at also is cytotoxicity. <laughs> they all have it, but obviously at a low enough level that the TGA approve, uh, has approved it to be done. Now I use Durant, I uh, and the other one. What's the one that's most common that has been around forever? Um, Essex. Essex is the cheapest one. It's been around forever. The properties are, you know, acceptable. Uh, but the cytotoxicity, uh, what's the best one? What's got the best, the lowest cytotoxicity? Durant does. And there's, what is it, 76% to 80 something percent, something like 6% different. Six out of 70 is nearly 10% difference in the cytotoxicity of the Invisalign material. See, they won't give you propriety what it is made of, but independent people can test the cytotoxicity. So, yeah, I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, I'm not poo-pooing the stuff. They're all TGA approved. But if you want to uh, 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 compare apples and apples and everything, there's well, other things to compare it to. I can't compare the stuff that they haven't told us about, and nobody can, but the cytotoxicity it shows me my, my duret material is, is better because it's less toxic. Hmm. So. I, I can't tell you, I can't measure. I even see some of the studies that measure these things. I don't know how, how accurate it is, all right? They all move teeth. They all move teeth. So if I can find it for you, so cool. I love that study when I found it. I thought, whoa, um, auto line, auto line, where my research library? No, this is surgical. Anyway, that's that's my take, and if I find it, I'll show it to you. Uh, it's 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 part of the course. I mean, when I find it, I say, I'm going to put it down there because I I envisage that's the kind of question you're going to ask. Which is the best material I'm going to use? Well, nobody else has come up with the best material you're going to use. And to tell you the truth, even though I'm excited about the fact that we can print those resin materials uh, pretty soon directly, imagine how fast that's going to be. The that that component of it is still significant, whether, whether it's cytotoxic or not. But bear in mind too, when you do a suck down thermal form, you start with one mil, and at the end of it, when you finish, there was a study done to show that, oh, they're pretty accurate. They're accurate in as much as one mil becomes 0 0.7, 0 0.8 mil. But I, again, I question the study, because I know in my hands, if I have a, a, somebody that has a very, very long uh, uh, incisor, when I do the suck down, by the end of it, the tip of it is very, very thin. So the consistency of the thickness of this material all the way through is, eh, you know, you can't control that. But it's, it's a standard, it's what everybody does. It's the, uh, the pull down uh, method does that. However, when we start printing this thing, when we print one mil, it's gonna be one mil. It'll be one mil all the way through. In fact, I, I 
conjecture, I, 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 I'm predicting that not only that, we may not need so many buttons because we can actually print these aligners with selective thicknesses where we want them to be. We can actually, something at the moment that we do, and they call it the, uh, what do you call it when they have the, uh, Kevin, help me out. We, you know, we're talking about how you have the, uh, 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 Invisalign has the uh, thing to do with like a reverse bu a button to do a lingual. Kind of like a, yes, kind of like a. Lingual talk. Yeah. Yes, a lingual talk. Yes, yeah. yeah. We can actually print that. We can actually say in the aligners, print that for me. How cool. When I say I want one mil or 0.75 mil, it'll be 0.75 mil all the way around. Is that good? I don't know. Uh, it, but it's under my control. Um, maybe, uh, but I can tell you right now, sometimes I print up, uh, uh, create a, a model and people have really long teeth. The models, uh, the trays are thinner than it should be. Eh. So maybe we'll have to use a tray more than once. Um, um, we do have another question. Um, yes. It's about like, you know, cost calculation. The question is from uh, Dr. Anita Koba. And just wondering if you have calculated what an average case uh, with the cost you want your um, account uh, for the time you spend planning, printing, making a liner plus material cost. And yeah, I, I have roughly again, I'm sorry, I've been focusing on doing this 40 minute course. It's in my uh, uh, thing somewhere. I've worked it out. I mean, each one of those sheets that I use, uh, what, five bucks each. Um, it takes five minutes for my staff to cut out one of these things. You can work it out like that. And even if you double what I thought it was going to be, it was something like 20 bucks to produce each tray, if that. Now, you, you then you talk about the intangibles at my time. Uh, yeah, but I will argue with you that you have to then compare apples and apples. Your time, if you do it properly, when you analyze the case that comes back from you know, from the report and you actually go through it properly and say, yeah, 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 this, 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 and this, or when you say to them, stage it for me, do this first and do that first. I know I've got a young dentist at work. He's very diligent. He gets his stuff and he's there for hours. I don't know how many hours he spent. Okay, what's the difference? The difference is you paid somebody already to do that and you still have to do it yourself. And I will argue with you that when you have that much control over the case, the efficiency that you get back, which is again an intangible, uh, and, uh, uh, it, it is far better. Um, and I never print, I never print a case from beginning to end, 30 cases. I never do. It's kind of like I drew this analogy to somebody the other day. It's like going to a par five for use golf, golfers. I'm not a golfer, but I understand what it is. It's imagine saying you, you play golf and it's a par five and uh, Invisalign says you can hit this one go, boom, and hole in one in par five. You're never going to get that. Okay. Well, you're never going to get it. You can, <laughs> but it's rare. So I ever only print a few cases before six cases and then track them, track them. Yeah, you're good. And I, uh, when I, when I see them the next time I say, okay, I'm now you got this tray. I'll print some more for you as you go. So I don't print all my trays up, in, uh, up front. So I don't have wasted materials either. Okay. Now, arguably, I've done the analysis and it's part of the course. When you do a full case with Invisalign, yeah, it's very cost effective. You know the cost goes down, right? But it's never cost effective to do the small cases. Never. It, it costs something like $200 per, per tray, so it's something ridiculous. And yet, the majority of what I'm doing, uh, uh, reaping the reward of, is now all the small cases. The low hanging fruit, it's there. But why would you do it when it's going to, man, the, 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 the profitability goes, unless you charge four, four, five grand or three, three thousand or two thousand to move six teeth, nobody, or, or, you know, to make slight movement, nobody's going to say yes. But what if I say to you, you know, I just want to move that a little bit. Yeah, you can. Mm, 800 bucks. It costs you 20 bucks to make it. Yeah. So all those cases, all those minor cases, which are significant, uh, and, People want them done. They just can't afford to do it when they, you're going to charge a, a third-party fee on top of it. That's the one that you will open up the door to. I don't know if I answer your questions succinctly enough. I don't know the, an exact number, but I, I put it to you that uh, 
it evens up or I think the overall benefit of the efficiency of what you get back because you're under control from the beginning is better. <clears throat> and I can tell you, it's certainly much more rewarding as a professional. I hope that answers your question. Um, that's all for the question at this time. Okay. I'll hand back you to you, uh, unless you wanted me to show some more. I think that was um, enough. Um, yes. Um, um, yes, um, since if you do have any more question and please um, you know, use the chat or you can use um, your mic to talk directly to us. And um, Dr. Just like a, before we go, you do, do you have any like a cases that you want to briefly show or? Uh, yeah, so I, I actually found the page, but I can't find the article, the one I want to show you. Um, ah, okay. But it, it doesn't matter. Take my word for it. I didn't make it up. The cytotoxicity of, uh, of Duran is better than th that material. So, um, but it, again, it's not significant. I don't think it's a, a be all and end all. Let me quickly perhaps show you uh, the ability of this software to to do um, to give you where are we? Who? Oh, this is the most horrible case th to deal with. <laughs> um, class three skeletal unilateral crossbite. This is what it looks like uh, initially. Nothing symmetrical about it. This tube is ankylosed. I didn't even scan, uh, take this tube because there's no way I can touch it. Uh, and he, she lost this tube. This tube is ankylosed. There's, there's a big defect there. You can't touch that area. Okay. Um, crossbite, crossbite, anterior crossbite. What can you do with this? Tell me, what can you do with this? Uh, it's horrible. And it's actually class one on this side. And Severe class three on this side. So, one scenario, I take the four one out. Right, the four one sticks out here. I'll, I'll take that one out. See what it, what it looks like. This is what it looks like. This is what the bike looks like. I mean, it's still class three, but it's interjetating properly. Right, it's coming together properly. Okay, and that's one scenario. I can put this proposal to the patient and say, uh, do you care, you know, you mind if I, you know, if I extract one too, because you really have too many at the bottom. Um, what if though, I start from here again and you go, what if I take this out? Because I really, I really want to have a class three here, right? Because the other one, I ended up with a bloody, the canines uh, up here somewhere because I didn't pull it back. What if I take this off and, and I'll extract the four and then I have a class one canine here, forget the rest is yeah, because it's missing tooth and whatnot. And I've got class one canine and class one canine here. That might be more acceptable. So all this um um yeah and, and that staging that's the result I want to get and I could move everything first and here's the thing why well, I did this because she really cares just to get this front part she said it's not about the looks it's just, yeah I mean, oh, it's just do the front for me and i thought see what i i know that when i did this and i i, I did the molar as a second stage is because this molar takes months to move right so i looked at the, the analysis and say what if i just leave the bloody molar alone and just fix what she asked me to fix how long will that take um and i'll show you how long that will take so create steps just to fix the front it's 18 and 13 on the top 18 aligners at the bottom okay then i want to do the bottom bit and i want to do the molars just to move that part along create the steps there's 21 steps just to move that molar inwards eh. and she doesn't care Right, so yeah, that's the kind of analysis you can do. Um, 
Thank you, Dr. Ho, and thank you for the time. And um, um, if we don't have any question at this time, and I guess it's better to, um, you know, you know, go back to the family again. <laughs> once okay. Again, uh, once again, thank you for the all the dentists and all the participants to join the um, today's um, the you know webinar and Zoom meeting, and also thank you, Dr. Michael Ho, for uh, sharing your time with us. Pleasure. And I will I will send you the email um, you know back to you tomorrow morning to ask you about like a feedbacks and um, um, about the detail about the course to, you know the you know individually to your email and um, um, please you know give me a call if you have any further questions and thank you thank you very much and have a good night thank you.